Fighting games have been around in the arcades since the late 70s, and took a minute to catch on, but in 1987, Capcom was able to find its own footing in the annals of Arcadum, when their new contender appeared. Enter Street Fighter. Produced and directed by Takashi Nishiyama, and designed by Hiroshi Matsumoto, Street Fighter introduced many of the features that were the basis for today's fighting games, most specifically the use of special techniques and six-button controls. Designed for the single player as Ryu, or an additional second player as Ken, the game focused on a series of 30-second one-on-one matches, and the special moves were something left to be discovered by players, as Capcom encouraged the player to explore versus giving players the directions. This was the first game to introduce such a concept. The reviews were generally positive, and after a home release under the name Fighting Street, Capcom struck even more gold when they fired the starting pistol for what would be the 90s fighting game boom, with 1991's Street Fighter II. Inspired by the success of Final Fight, Capcom had decided to revive the Street Fighter game, but with added advantages such as more options for playability, and even more characters to choose from than just Ryu and Ken. Now players could also pick E Honda, Zangief, Dalzim, Guile, Blanca, or Chun-Li. The arcade game in Japan was awarded the best game of 1991, and also won the genre-specific best action game. A year later, Street Fighter II was released for the Super Famicom in Japan, and was the first to be released on a 16 megabit cartridge later that year in the United States. This game would go on to be considered one of the best games of all time. The joystick and button combos were the most accurate scans at the time, allowing for players to flawlessly execute special moves, and introduce the mechanics of the combo, something still used in modern gaming. Its influence was so powerful that multiple fighting games began popping up in an attempt to emulate its success. The only one that even came close was Mortal Kombat. Street Fighter II's cultural impact didn't just stop when the game was turned off. It started an entire multimedia craze. In 1993, Hasbro bought the rights for the toy line and incorporated them into the line of G.I. Joe's. It was also the basis for the unofficial Korean Street Fighter cartoon, as well as the Hong Kong action film Future Cops, albeit with changed character names. There was also a USA Network Saturday morning cartoon that lasted two seasons despite negative reviews. The excellent Street Fighter II the animated movie would be released in Japanese theaters in 1994, followed by a US home video release from Manga Entertainment. 1994 would also see the release of Street Fighter, a live-action film starring Jean-Claude Van Damme and the late, great Raul Julia. The film would earn a spot on Game Trailers and Time's Top 10 Worst Video Game Movies. Capcom then started the trend of adding revisions to games with releases like Street Fighter 2 Dash Turbo and Super Street Fighter 2 The New Challengers, each new release tweaking the previous content or gameplay. Their next full-fledged new game was Street Fighter Alpha Warrior's Dream in 1995. Also known as Street Fighter Zero in other countries, Warrior's Dream took place between 87 Street Fighter and 1991 Street Fighter 2, and introduced new characters as well as characters from the original and final fight. The arcade received mixed reviews for not being enough of an update to warrant a whole new game. However, the PlayStation and Sega Saturn releases were praised due in part to the lower amount of animation data, allowing for an almost direct port featuring the arcade source code. Alpha would receive its own sequels, 1996's Alpha 2 and 1998's Alpha 3. 1996 also brought us Street Fighter EX, a spin-off and the first to feature 3D polygon graphics, yet was still based on Street Fighter's traditional linear physics. At this time, Capcom performed yet another brilliant move. Having been the brains behind the 1994 Marvel fighting game X-Men Children of the Atom, they decided to bring the two franchises together. X-Men vs. Street Fighter would be the first installment in a series that would span eight more games, the latest being Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Capcom would continue incorporating Street Fighter into their vs. games, with Capcom vs. SNK, Namco vs. Capcom, Tatsunoko vs. Capcom, and 2012 Street Fighter X Tekken. A year after the X-Men Street Fighter release, in 1997, Capcom developed a continuation of their initial releases with Street Fighter III New Generation, a direct sequel to Street Fighter II. 
Street Fighter 3 would also have its own two follow-ups, Second Impact also in 1997, as well as Third Strike in 1999. It would be nine more years before the next numerical Street Fighter would rise up. And rise up it did. 2008 Street Fighter 4 would hit hard and receive universal acclaim with its 3D rendered graphics and classic 2D gameplay. The animated film Street Fighter 4 The Ties That Bind would be included as a bonus disc with the collector's edition. As with the previous Street Fighter games, this too received its own upgrades with Super Street Fighter 4 and 2014's arcade release of Ultra Street Fighter 4. In 2016, Street Fighter V hit the circuit, but not to a great success initially. Criticized upon release for its lack of content and amount of bugs in the software, Capcom missed its sales target, though in time it has met its projections, partially because of the high praise it did receive for its graphics and gameplay, which had used the Unreal Engine 4. Mangas and comics based on the series have appeared since 1993's three-issue release from Malibu that was cancelled abruptly because of Capcom's dislike of the comics. Four manga series by Masahiko Nakahira would see an American release from Udon Publishing. Udon was also tapped to create an American comic and began publication in 2003. With more than 60 issues under its belt, it is still in production today. Most recently, in 2016, IDW published a six-issue series titled Street Fighter X G.I. Joe. Live-action adaptations of Street Fighter would continue with 2009's universally panned Street Fighter The Legend of Chun-Li. Fans of the franchise would finally get a live-action effort worth praising in 2010, with the release of Joey Anza and Owen Trevor's Street Fighter Legacy. Legacy's creators would then launch Street Fighter Assassin's Fist on Machinima's YouTube channel in 2014, with Street Fighter Resurrection following in 2016. Other notable animated efforts include 1995's Japanese TV series Street Fighter 2V, which would see release in the US by Manga Entertainment, Street Fighter Alpha Generations that would be produced for the English market in 2005, and the Super Street Fighter 4 movie, which was included in the Street Fighter 25th Anniversary Collector set released in 2012. And it doesn't stop there. This was only a brief history, but there are plenty more games, anime, fan films, and more to be explored in the Street Fighter universe. It's hard to believe that a simple game can start what has been a 30-year legacy, but it's apparent that the Street Fighter franchise has many more years to go before throwing in the towel. Like the video? Have suggestions? Comment below and please be sure to subscribe.